You know, sometimes the question always comes up, <laughs> Ben finally talked to, how do you bond the horns back onto the cores? Let me show you a quick and easy way to do it. And it has nothing to do with paper mache as far as bonding the horns to the cores. Now these here are pronghorn antelope horns. They've already been boiled and cleaned. Now, I've already bored a hole here and a hole there. I'll bore these other two. What you do, you think about safety. I make a lot of mistakes sometimes on safety, but uh, something you got to think about right there. Okay. Now you notice the way I turned the drill is a little bit bigger opening. That way there's more bondo that can go ahead and grab the cores itself. Now, some people, some taxidermists, some people prefer when the antelope is fresh and it just comes into your shop, sometimes they'll go ahead and bore a hole right at the base of the horn so they know precisely exactly where the horn fits, how far down. Because you can actually push these down quite a little bit. And it will detract a little bit from the horn length in the overall mount, but it's not really that noticeable. Okay, but some people, they want to carry perfection way beyond what it should be, but that's personal preference. What I'm trying to do here is make sure these babies don't come off, and they won't. First of all, orienteer everything to make sure you have the right side on the cores. Because if you don't, and you bond to them, you come back and go, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. Well, you want to make sure you don't do that. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Drills out of the way. So we can see here how this is going. Take this side off. Take that side off. Flip this around. Let me turn this around so I don't get confused myself. So we'll go ahead and get everything looking this way. The back, the front. What we're going to do is mix up some quick Bondo. Put these over there. Stir this up a little bit. You can use the regular wooden stir sticks, old rulers like I'm using here. Whatever's convenient for you. Now you don't need a lot of Bondo. A bit more than that, that's for sure. So what we're going to do, about all we need right there, put that back up there, put this top back on there. Okay, the hardener, you mix the hardener with it, and you have to work quick. Now again, orienteer everything right. What we're going to do is coat these tips, coat a little bit here and there, and then push these down. That's what we're going to do. Out a little ribbon, getting kind of low on this. Trying to hurry up. The weather's changing kind of bad here in Colorado today, and we're outside of the shop. Get that nice mix on there. Okay, right there. Nice. Right there on the sides where it's going to bond. Here's the side that goes down. Grab that. Push that baby down to where you're happy with it. Or you have it marked like I talked about that before. <clears throat> Do the other side. Some may have a little bit more than the other one. Doesn't make any difference, as long as it's reasonable and it adheres. Grab this side, come down. Okay, bring that up about a quarter of an inch. And there you go. Finish. You set that off to the side to dry. It'll be dry in about 30 or 40 minutes, and then you can proceed to mount it. Or you can wait until you actually mount 
the skull plate onto the form itself and then you can go ahead and use the bondo and set the horns. But that's how you do it. It's a quick method, it's accurate, it works, and it's pretty much permanent. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it.